Good morning, students. I am Dr. Vakesh Desa, Dean Research, Professor, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, ATM College of Engineering. I have been taking the module two of the course Digital System Design, the subject for ATM C thirty four. The whole module is all about analysis and design of combination logic. The course objectives are as follows. The first one is illustrate simplification of algebraic equations using Carnot map and Pin map cascades. Next, the second objective is to design decoder, encoder, multiplexers, adder, subtractor, and binary comparator. The third objective is describe latches and flip flops registers and counters. The fourth one is analysis of Miller and Moore model. The fifth course objective is develop state diagrams, synchronous sequential circuits, and to appreciate the applications of digital circuits. The prerequisites for learning this particular model is. You are expected to have the knowledge of functioning of the gates. You should be having clear information and the knowledge about Boolean equations. You need to be well versed with them. And you should be able to solve the equations using K map and K map classical techniques. And these concepts are being learned by you in the previous model. The syllabus pertaining to this particular module is you need to learn decoders, encoders, digital multiplexers, adders, and subtractors, look ahead carry generators, binary comparators, programmable logical devices, complex programmable logical devices, and FPGO, which stands for field programmable capability. Among these, the first six topics are covered in the text one. In that, you need to refer chapter four further. The last three topics are being covered in the text three, chapter nine of text three. In that, students, you particularly need to refer the topics from nine point six to nine point eight. These are the textbooks that you need to refer, and these are the reference books. Right? So let us start with the actual content. Happy learning. We shall start further. So whenever we are designing any combination circuit, there is a procedure that we need to follow. Dear students. If you understand the procedure that we have to follow, then it is very easy for us to design any combination circuit, whatever is the application might be. Right? So let us see which are the steps that we have to follow. Then we shall take the example of one such circuit, and we shall design using the steps that we are going to learn now. And based on this understanding. We can design the other combination circuits that are there in the syllabus, right? Now, so when we are designing the combination circuit, the very first step is to develop a statement describing the problem that needs to be solved. Okay, so whenever any question has been given, we have to design the combination circuit. Okay, so based on the requirement, we have to develop a statement. The requirement varies depending upon the application, right? So first and foremost is we have to develop a statement. Next, based on the statement that we have made in step one, we have to construct a truth table. Okay, constructing the truth table will help us to understand the relationship between the input and output. Okay, once we are done with it. 
then we have to use either k map or twin line matrix k method to simplify the functions in deriving the output equations. When we write the proof table as per the, the requirement of step 2, later what we do, we find the variables for which we are getting the output to be high. Right? Then based on that, we are going to develop certain equations. Those equations we need to simplify further. Right? Once we have done with these three steps, we need to arrange all the simplified equations so that it suits the logic data that has to be used in realizing the circuit. Right? Dear students, we know that we have to use logic gates for designing the combinational circuits. So, that's the step 4 intent is to finally reduce the equations to the simplified form where we shall be able to implement that by using the logic gates. Right? And the final step is to draw the logic diagram. Right? So, these are the five steps that we need to follow to design any combinational logic design that has been given in the form of a process diagram here, right? And it is sequential student. We have to have step one, we have step two. Step one and step two are must for step three. And similarly for the other steps as well. Okay? So, if at all we are comfortable with this, we shall be able to design any combinational logic system. Right? So, this is about the procedure that we have to follow. Let us see how we can implement by considering a simple example. Right? So, this is a 2-bit binary multiplier. When we say 2-bit multiplier, bit multiplier, we know that it will have two sets of inputs. We have a0, a1 and b0, b1. a0, a1 is a 2 bit and similarly b0, b1 is the other set of 2 bits. And we have products b0, b1, b2, b3. The function of this circuit is to find the product of the 2 bits and give the results. Right? Now, our requirement is to design a combinational logic which will be able to give the output by doing multiplication of the inputs. Right? What did the first step say? Okay. In the procedure, we understood the very step, first step was to write a statement. Right? Now, let us write the statement. What is the statement that we are going to write? So, we have four input variables. It is clear. They are A1, A1, B1, and B0. And we have four output variables. B0, B1, B2, and B3. Right? Now, and our requirement is to find the product of the inputs. Now, based on this requirement, now we have written the proof table. Right? So, in, because we have four different input students, we can have 16 different combinations. We can start from 0, 0, 0, 0, and we can go up to 1, 1, 1, 1. Right? So, now when you do the multiplication of these numbers, these are the outputs that we are going to get. So, this completes step number 2. Right? Now, so the step number 3 was to derive the, write the equations. Right? Now, see, when our P3 is high, P3 is high, we are writing it in the form of sum of products. Okay? P3 is high for when a1, A0, B1, and B0 are high. Otherwise, P3 is 0. That could be seen from the state table. Similarly, P2 is high. Okay, P2 is high for when A0, when we have the combination 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and triple 1, 0. Right? And similarly, P1 becomes high for the condition where the inputs are 0 double one zero, 0 triple 1, 1 0 1, 1 0 1 1, sorry, 1 1 0 1, that stands for 13, okay, and 3 1 1, 
zero, it stands for forty. It similarly so for linear as well. Okay, so once we have these equations, then what we do? We write the equation for this. See for P three it is a one a naught b one b naught. Right here we have only one set of variable for which the output is high. Right, but it is not so for the others. Right, we have sum of products for ten, eleven, and fourteen. Now what is the equation that we are going to have? See for the example for ten we are going to have one zero one zero whose equivalent is a one a naught bar b one and b naught bar plus for eleven it is going to be something for fourteen it is something else. Okay, now when you simplify it further we cannot leave that as it is so we need to further simplify it. When we further simplify it using boolean equations okay or by using theorem or by using kinematic kinematic methods okay p2 is will be the this will be the equation for p2 similarly for p1 and p2 so these are the simplified equations that we have got this completes step 4 here yeah. now once we are done with it next we have to draw the logic diagram right so you can use for the simulation purpose you can use multi sim logic sim or any such tools to draw the logic diagram okay so here we have used logic sim so this is the set logic diagram that we are going to get so p3 is what a1 a0 b1 b0 we have taken the input from a1 a0 b1 and b0 so we have connected that to an and get and we are able to get the output okay it should be equal to this so p3 has got this value and similarly for p2 and p2 p1 and p0 okay so this completes the procedure of it once you are done with it once the logic diagram is done then the only thing that is left is implementation you have to connect this in the circuit see whether it is working or not okay so this is the procedure that we have to follow for designing any combinational logic circuit right and these are the five steps that we need to follow and this is the procedure that has been explained with the help of an example now on we can see how the remaining circuits can be designed by using the same procedure the procedure remains the same students the methodology remains the same the variables may change right thank you